Warframe introduces a new frame that deals in grenades, turrets, and time. Destiny 2 previews the Beyond Light expansion. Brawlhalla is running out of things to cross over with, and Hearthstone has begun its Fellfire Festival of Music and Vengeance. What's up guys, James Blonde here with your weekly recap for gaming news and announcements of the week of June 12th, 2020. It's a hot week right before what would normally be E3 week, though most big publishers are sticking to the schedule and just doing the digital presentations. Some of the new titles shown off for the PS5 reveal and the console itself is pretty sweet. The gaming madness has already kicked off this week, so let's get to it. Starting us off is Bungie's major announcement of a new Destiny 2 expansion, Beyond Light. In this expansion, players will be able to visit the frozen moon of Europa to fight against a new threat. They'll be armed with a mysterious new power through stasis. Of course, this will also include a new raid, a new storyline, and more to be revealed in the coming months. Beyond Light's set to launch on September 22nd this year. Next-gen fans will also be happy to hear that Destiny 2 has confirmed it will launch on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Alongside the expansion, Destiny 2 has also kicked off its 11th season, the Season of Arrivals. This new season features the new Prophecy Dungeon, alongside plenty of new rewards including the Diato Foundry Armor, the Wither Horde Epic Grenade Launcher, and a new Ingram system that lets players customize their new gear even further. If you're a fan of racing games, you might be interested in this next one. Bandai Namco has announced Project Cars 3. Surprise! Project Cars 3 builds on the experience of the first two Project Cars games and includes over 200 vehicles, 140 global circuits, and complete four-season, all-weather, 24-hour racing. Project Cars 3 will also introduce a new career mode, many new customization options, and redeveloped features to make the game more accessible to everyone. It's still a little hard to think of Project Cars as a full-fledged MMO, but there's no doubt the team is trying hard to make that a reality. It'll be available this summer on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Moving on to game updates, Warframe launched its Dreadlock Protocol update this past week on PC. This introduces a brand new quest unlocked after completing Vox Solaris. The update features a redesigned Corpus fleet and remastered levels, plus a new Granum Crown currency that can be used to start new challenges and more. Finally, the update also introduces the new Warframe Protea, which uses grenades, turrets, and a temporal anchor that can rewind time to restore ammo, shields, energy, and health. That's pretty sweet. Meanwhile, Gameforge's Aeon is taking a new journey with the launch of Update 7.5, The Wake of the Storm. This update includes the new Silentera Canyon Zone, two new dungeons, and reworks to several older dungeons. Players can also find new Odeon and Rune systems to upgrade gear, new vision weapons, six new legendary transformations, and much, much more. Again, keep in mind this is the EU published Aeon by Gameforge and not NCSoft's North American version. In other news, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Warzone have kicked off Season 4. This offers the CR-56 AMAX Assault Rifle and the Finnick SMG as new free weapons, along with new rotational modes like Juggernaut Royale and Warzone Rumble 50v50. Three new maps also hit the game, Zokov Scrapyard, Trench, and Baraket Promenade. Fans of the series may also be happy to see Captain Price return as a new operator. There's plenty packed in here for Warzone players, so make sure to check it out. Well, Brawlhalla just keeps the crossover train running. We've seen Steven Universe, the WWE, Tomb Raider, and now it's time for Cartoon Network's Ben 10. Because why not? Ben 10 comes in as alien forms Heat Blast, Diamond Head, and Forearms, each featuring custom signature effects and weapon skins. The update that brings this crossover also brings a new morph game mode, a new free-for-all and 1v1 map, and many other prominent features. Over in the wargaming sphere, World of Tanks has officially launched its 1.9.1 update, which focuses on the brand new, historically designed Berlin map. The update also includes new customization elements, including progressive decals and adjustable styles. Alongside it, the Season 2 Battle Pass for the game is now available, offering three months to earn exclusive time-limited rewards like new styles, crew members, bounty equipment, and more. Meanwhile, World of Warships has revealed update 0.9.5. This includes the new Hamburg Dockyard event, where two German ships can be built over the course of weeks. 
The update also features prominent improvements to combat missions from a revamped UI to new or conditions that give you more flexibility in how you complete your objectives. The Soviet cruiser branch has split in two and there's many other improvements, so make sure you check out the link below for more details. And while Ankama is working on a Kickstarter for the fourth season of Wakfu animations, they decided to surprise players with a new teaser trailer for Dofus called Pandala Awakens. This teaser hints for an upcoming rework of the Pandala Island, home to the Pandawas. This update was initially mentioned in January as the most ambitious makeover that's ever been done to Dofus. So expect that to be one major update when it's ready to go. Dual Universe has also offered a new teaser this past week, showcasing the game's ship-based PvP battles. Players can take their handcrafted ships into battle, from simple skirmishes to massive fleet engagements. Dual Universe will use a lock and fire mechanism that forces players to identify a ship before firing on it and lets players form crews to manage large player fleets as well as onboard roles like pilot, gunner, and more. Battles will also feature real-time damage since the game is voxel-based, meaning that you'll always be able to see how your ships are faring. All this footage is from Alpha too, so the game's got some impressive progress already. In other MMO news, Arcage and Arcage Unchained have launched their Garden of the Gods update. This update continues the game's storyline with 59 new quests, 14 new areas, a new world boss, new monsters, and more. You can embark on new weekly quests, visit new territory buildings, utilize new disguised trade packs, and gather new Hiram and Aranor gear. Over in Dauntless, the new Call of the Void patch is now live. This update introduces the Umbral Escalation, featuring the new behemoth Thrax, a swift beast that can use portals to confound hunters. New players and veterans alike can now access the training grounds, which lets players test out weapons, loadouts, gear, and tactics together. There's of course a new Hunt Pass 2 that runs until July 23rd with 50 levels of in-game rewards. Meanwhile, Terra console players can look forward to the Awakening update, scheduled to land on June 30th on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The update introduces new Apex abilities for each class, available once you've reached level 65 and item level 439. Alongside this, players will be able to tackle the Dark Reach Citadel dungeon for the first time, unraveling its mysteries and, of course, looting its spoils. Terra Console has also launched a short hotfix update that adds the new Demon Wheel event dungeon and RK9 kennel for a limited time. If you're feeling the heat, it might be because Hearthstone has begun its Fellfire Festival of Music and Vengeance. The first update for this event is already live, adding 17 new minions and 3 new heroes. On June 17th, the festival will continue with a new free 5 chapter solo adventure, Trial by Fellfire, and the new hero Arana. Beating this adventure will grant you the Rusted Legion card back too. June 24th marks the next step with Fellfire challenges that unlock Golden Catholic Sunstrider and the return of the Burned Down Tavern Brawl. And to wrap things up in July, July 1st we'll see the Rumble Down Tavern Brawl. It's a lot to look forward to if you still have interest in Hearthstone. And Smite has presented its god reveal and gameplay preview for Cthulhu, its newest god in this sort of weird kind of wonky abnormal and yet disturbing trailer thing. If you missed the news about that, yes, the very elder god of Lovecraftian horrors has arrived in Smite as a playable god and features a torture and sanity mechanic along with substantial crowd control abilities as well as team buffs. And just sort of goes to show that they're kind of running out of ideas. Although this one's really cool. Cthulhu goes live on servers next week on June 16th. And finally, for our last bit of news, it's a great time to get into Ark Survival Evolved for two reasons. First, because it's genuinely a great game to begin with, and it's celebrating its fifth anniversary, which includes a new map called Crystal Isles that looks to be epic, with some reworks to some of the dinos, as seen in the trailer. And second, because Epic Games has just made it free until June 18th, and just like all the other games that have gone on sale for zero dollars, it's free to keep forever. Totally worth it, just saying. But you do need more than a toaster to run it, that's for sure. 
But with that being said, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. Be sure to stay safe and keep your families healthy. Like always, you can find more information on the news topics linked in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or even more news in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, wash your hands a bunch, hit that little bell icon to get notifications, and of course, share this video. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.